So what happens is we would turn in a permit, um, it's a joint permit to, to both the state and federal agencies, so the Army Corps and the Division of State Lands. Same application, same reports, everything go into both of those. And what happens is the Division of State Lands, at the state level, they take that information, they have their guidelines that they have to re uh, follow, but they will turn around and give it to people like the Department of Fish and Wildlife, ODFW, They'll give it to the DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality. And so they bring in all of the state agencies to review that application. And then they, uh, like uh, the, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, they'll come back with comments, concerns, um, and then they will give that back to Division of State Lands. And then Division of State Lands makes the decision. Same thing on the federal level. So you've got the Army Corps that actually is the regulatory body but they give our application to the Natural, uh, National Marine Fisheries Service, or NOAA, which you refer to it both ways, NIMS or NOAA. Um, they regulate anadromous fish that move back out to the ocean and come back up here. Um, they would be looking at it, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife would be looking at it from a plant species and endangered species and, and other sources, and, and then um, they have additional people to look at it. So it's, it's basically, Army Corps looks at the federal level and the federal agencies get a chance to review everything at that point. And then you also have the county level. You have the floodplain administrators um, that have to look at it from a floodplain standpoint, a construction standpoint, and so you have a county level permit as well. So there's basically three governing bodies that, that would actually issue permits. Um, and then, but everybody gets a chance to take their review of it. So it's a pretty lengthy process and a detailed process um, that nobody, you know, nobody uh, makes in a vacuum. It's pretty, pretty uh, widely looked at. Right, the only one that uh, you had that you didn't mention was it's also uh, the site has historic qualities to it, and we're going to have to follow yeah. the uh, process working with the uh, agencies that regulate and historic resources. So that's going to be part of the permit process as well. Yeah. Uh, last question here. Is that me? <laughs> Yep. Hi, I'm Frank Callahan, I'm a botanist, and uh, I'd like to review some of your paperwork uh, work on this to see exactly what you're talking about. Uh, uh, Populous trichotarpa, the black cotton is definitely a recurring plant. Uh, what you I'm there. sorry, I can't hear a thing oh. he's saying. <laughs> okay, we have, I don't have a microphone. <laughs> right. We have all kinds of sedges that are definitely recurring. Uh, Give the mic. Give the mic. question. Yeah. Please ask a question. Give the mic. Uh, when, did, when, did the county, when did the county take ownership of this? 1970. 1972. Uh, how come they haven't moved forward with developing it into a park or recreation area? And why I asked that is I'm originally from Bandit. Has anybody been to Bandit and seen Mayor Bond? Yes. That's very much the same thing we have here. They also generate electricity. Amen. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't have the, any salmon. Uh, <laughs> the reason the county didn't do it, it was just simply a matter of priorities. There was a lot of competing priorities, other parks that uh, the county invested in rather than this one. You know, it, uh, was that the right decision? That's a matter of opinion, but basically uh, park funds were invested in other facilities rather than this one. Now, what we're going to do is that the way that we put this meeting together was some presentations with a few quick questions. But really what we'd like to do is an open house format. We're going to have folks stationed at each one of these sites. Those that have questions, save those questions and please ask them when you get to the site, when you get there, because we want to answer all of your questions to the best of our ability. Um, and so we're not um, dismissing your questions, but we, we, we will answer them on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So with that, why don't we go ahead and just go ahead and disperse, go to the, the, the different maps and ask, uh, ask your questions. Again, Please feel free, and we encourage you, to fill out the form and submit your questions on that. In addition, help us scope the environmental assessment so that we have a clear picture of the issues that you have. Thanks.